Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Anupma Biology Classes. This is the fourth video in the series of reproduction. In this video, we will know about the human reproductive system in detail. And this video is from chapter 3 of CVSC class 12th. So let's start the topic. And here the question is what is reproduction? Reproduction is the ability of living organism to produce a new generation of living organisms similar to themselves. So, it is the process by which new organisms produced from their parents and it is a fundamental feature of life and each organism exists as the result of reproduction. Now, reproduction is of two types. First one is asexual and the second is sexual. In case of asexual reproduction, there is not involvement of two parents. But in case of sexual reproduction, there is involvement of two parents. One is male and the other is female. The reproductive units in the sexual reproduction are a specialized cell which is known as gametes. In case of male, it is known as spermatozoa and in case of female, gamete is known as ova. And the process of formation of gametes is known as gametogenesis. So, in case of male, it is known as spermatogenesis. And in case of female, it is known as oogenesis. Now, the developmental period which is divided into two parts. First one is embryonic period. And this period passed in the egg or mother's womb. And the second is post embryonic period. It continues at the time of hatching or birth, the young animal is not fully developed structurally and functionally. So, it grows and undergoes many developmental changes of the progressive nature before becoming adult ready for reproduction. The developmental events of an animal from the zygote or blastose to the adult constitutes its life history or ontogeny. And the study of process involving orderly changes in the structure and physiology of organism during their entire life is called developmental biology. Now, in this picture you can see the similarity in the embryonic development in which after the zygote early stages are almost same in all but when they starts to grow, they show differences. So, a zygote is a specific blueprint for future development. Now, the phases of embryonic development. And in this, you can see there are many phases in which the first one is gametogenesis. It means the formation of gametes that is spermatozoa and ova. Second is fertilization. After the formation of gametes, there is union of male and female gametes to form a zygote. It is also known as conception. Next is gestation. And it means the developmental events from the conception till birth of the young one. And it is known as pregnancy. Here, there are three sequential processes occur in the pregnancy. First is cleavage and blastulation where the rapid division of the zygote to form a multicellular body of cells which is known as blastomere. Second is gastrulation where the movement of cells to form germ layer. And the third is organogenesis. It means the differentiation of cells at specific places in the germ layer to form tissues, organs and organ system. And after this, the last that is the parturition. It means the birth of the full term young one. Now, the embryonic development involves growth and differentiation. Growth is an increase in size and differentiation is an increase in complexity and organization. Now, here we will discuss human reproductive system in detail. So, here you can see the you know that the human is unisexual and so sexual dimorphism. So the human reproductive system is distinguishable into primary sex organs and secondary sex organs. In case of primary sex organ, 
like the gonads that is the testes and ovaries and the secondary sex organs include reproductive ducts and reproductive glands so the primary sex organ produce gametes that is spermatozoa and ovra which is produced by gonads and the secondary sex organs carry gametes to the site of fertilization may also provide space for the embryonic development primary sex organs secrete sex hormones in male and female both in case of the male testosterone or androgens and in case of the female estrogen and progesterone while the secondary sex organ secretes useful materials other than hormones here in this picture you can see this is the ovary this is the primary sex organ in female and this is testicle or testes in male and this is the primary sex organ besides primary and secondary sex organs there are some accessory sex characters in male and female which is distinguished here so like body build if we talk about the body building in male body is large more muscular and is strong while in female body is small less muscular and weaker in case of hair in male beard mustache and chest hair present while in female beard mustache and chest hair absent in case of breast in male it is poorly developed while it is very well developed in female in skin quality in male it is more hairy and coarse while in case of the female it is less hairy and soft in shoulders in male broad shoulders present while it is narrow in case of female pelvis is narrow in male and broad in female in case of boys male is low pitched while the females are high pitched in behavior males are often aggressive while the females are often mild in larynx it means adam's apple it is prominent forward projection in the neck in male while in female it is little prominent so these are the main differences in the male and female by the accessory sex characters now the main part of the reproduction that is the male reproductive system and here the male reproductive system consist of this is the structure where you can see all the male reproductive structures that means organs so in case of male a scrotum project a pair of testes a pair of vasa efferentia a pair of epididymis a pair of vasa differentia a pair of ejaculatory duct a urethra a penis and certain glands so these are the male reproductive system which we study here in detail so the first one is that is the scrotum scrotum is the pouch of pigmented skin arising from the lower abdominal wall and hanging between the legs so scrotum contains the external spermatic fascia testes epididymis and ductus differentes and it is homologous to the labia majora as like in females it acts as a thermoregulator and maintaining the testes at a temperature 2 degree centigrade to 2.5 degree centigrade lower than that of the body because of this it protects the sperm when temperature falls the scrotum shrinks become thick and bring testes close to the body to get warmth and when temperature rises the scrotum becomes relaxed thin and flaccid to lose heat and if testes fails to descend into the scrotum it causes sterility in this picture you can see the position of the scrotum its dermis contains almost a continuous layer of smooth muscle fiber called deltus tunic the scrotum is divided internally into the right and left scrotal sacs by a muscular partition the septum scroti the testes originate in the abdominal cavity during the 7 month of development and descend permanently into the respective scrotal sacs through passages which is known as inguinal canals so man persistently 
wearing tight underpants or they are taking very hot bath may have a reduced sperm count almost leading to infertility now the second male reproductive organ that is the testis which is the most important part in the male they are suspended in their scrotal sacs by their spermatic cords and testis are soft smooth pinkish oval organ and 4 to 5 cm long 2 to 3 cm wide and 2 to 4 cm thick and it is divided into two parts first one is the protective coat or tunica and the second is the testicular lobules so in this picture you can see the median longitudinal section of the mammalian testis and it has two coverings the inner is known as tunica albigina and the outer is known as tunica vaginalis in testicular lobules seminiferous tubules are present because the ingrowth of the tunica albigina which is known as septa and it's divided into 200 to 300 lobules and each testicular lobules contain one to four highly convoluted seminiferous tubules blood vessels and nerves embedded in the loose connective tissue so here this is the structure of the seminiferous tubule and all the seminiferous tube come in center and joined by the tubular recti which opens into the reti testis the seminiferous tubules are lined by the germinal epithelium and the majority of the cells in this epithelium are cuboidal spermatogenic cells but a few are large supporting Sertoli or nurse cell. Now in this picture you can see a part of a transverse section of testis revealing seminiferous tubules. Here the cuboidal cells divides by mitotic division to produce spermatogonia and this spermatogonia grows into spermatocytes at first primary spermatocytes and then secondary spermatocytes these form spermatids and the spermatids after the metamorphosis form spermatozoa and this process of formation of spermatozoa from the spermatogonia is known as spermatogenesis. Now, the functions of the Sertoli cells. They provide nourishment to the developing spermatozoa. They secrete ABP. So, what is ABP? ABP is the androgen binding proteins that concentrate in the seminiferous tubule and plays a role in spermatogenesis. They secrete inhibin protein which suppresses FSH secretion and also play a role in regulation of spermatogenesis. Now the interstitial cells or Leydig cells which you can see in this picture this is the Leydig cells and these are small groups of large polygonal cells lie in the connective tissue present between the seminiferous tubules. And they secrete androgens that is the male sex hormone into the blood. And the third is that is the third part of the male reproductive system and it is vasa efferentia. In this picture you can see this is the reti testis, this is efferent duct and this is epididymus. So, from the reti testis, 15 to 20 fine convoluted ductil, ductules, the vasa efferentia, pires the tunica albigina to enter the head of the epididymis and it bears cilia to aid in sperm transport. After this, the fourth, that is the epididymis. And in the picture you can see the structure of the epididymis. It is a long tube called the structure attached to the hind surface of the testis. And it has three reasons. First one is the head or caput epididymis. It is the upper portion which receives vasa efferentia. Second is body or corpus epididymis. It is the middle narrow portion. And then last is the tail or cauda epididymis. It is the lower wider portion. 
So, in the head portion, the sperms undergo physiological maturation, acquiring increased motility and fertility capacity. Then, it passed down into the tail portion where the sperms is stored for a short period before entering into the vast difference. It shows the peristaltic and segmenting contractions at intervals to push the spermatozoa away from the testes. And spermatozoa production depends whether ejaculation takes place or not. And if spermatozoa not ejaculated, they are reabsorbed in the vas difference. Now, the vas difference. In this picture, you can see the vas difference here. That is a structure. It is 40 cm long and coiled structure. It is continuation of the cauda epididymis. It passes over the urinary bladder, curves around the ureter and joins the duct of its seminal vesicles to form an ejaculatory duct. So, it is formed by the union of the vas difference with the duct of the seminal vesicles. It means the ejaculatory duct. And these are about 2 cm long, thin wall tubes pass through the prostate glands and open into the urethra. So, the ejaculatory duct is formed by the union of vas difference with the duct of the seminal vesicles. In the picture, here, now the urethra, which you can see, this is the structure of the urethra. It is the urinary duct leading from the bladder and it has three reasons. First one is prostatic urethra, it is surrounded by the prostate gland. Second is the membranous urethra, it has no covering and the last is pineal urethra, it passes through the penis. Urethra has two sphincters that is internal and external. Internal is made up of smooth muscle fibers and the external sphincter is made up of striated muscle fibers. Now the penis in the picture you can see. It is an external intermittent organ through which the urethra runs and it contains three columns in which the two carpora uh, cavernosa which is present on the front side and the second is one corpus spongiosum and it is around the urethra. Near the tip of penis the corpus spongiosum is enlarged to form a soft and highly sensitive glans penis which is covered by prepuce or foreskin. So, the sperms are stored for the most part in the vasa differentia, epididymis and the proximal part of the vasa differentia. In this picture you can see the carpus carviosum which is 2 in number and the carpus spongiosum that is one in number. So these are the three columns are present in penis. Now the accessory glands and here in this picture you can see the first one that is the seminal vesicles and they contribute to yellowish slightly alkaline viscous seminal fluid that contains the sugar fructose or coagulating enzymes ascorbic acid and hormones like prostaglandins. So they are located near the ampulla of the vasa differentia. Here the fructose provides energy to the sperms for motion that means moving and prostaglandins stimulate the construction in the female reproductive tract to help the meeting of sperm and ovum in the oviduct and the duct of the seminal vesicle join to vas difference. Next is the prostate glands. It secretes a milky slightly acidic fluid thin which is discharged into the prostatic part of the urethra. It contains citrate and anticoagulant enzymes and the secretion nourish and activates the spermatozoa to swim. So, it surrounds the first portion of the urethra and it saves it like a chestnut, a spongy and lobulated. So, this is the prostate gland and the seminal vesicles. Now, the next is 
कॉपर्स ग्लैंड और बल्ब यूरेथ्रल ग्लैंड द सिक्रीट ऑयलकलाइन म्यूकस विच इज डिस्चार्ज इन टू द मेम्रेनस पार्ट ऑफ द यूरेथ्रा and the mucus coats the urethra before sperm released this serves to neutralize any acidic urine remaining in the urethra so in case of the corpus gland you can see they are present below the prostate gland and secretion of this gland carries some spermatozoa which is released before ejaculation so this is one of the reason for the high failure rate of the withdrawal method of the birth control other glands like the prepuce which contains prepucial glands which produces a sebaceous substance which together with desquamated epidermal cells from the which is pasty foul smelling accumulation called smegma about the base of the gland penis beneath the prepuce and the semen that is the secretions of the accessory sex glands and mucus are added to the sperm to form seminal fluid or the semen or seminal plasma it is rich in fructose calcium and the certain enzymes so what is the role of semen semen serves many functions like it provides the fluid medium for the transport of sperm into the vagina of the female it nourishes and activates the sperm to keep them viable and motile it neutralizes the acidity of urine in the urethra of the male and the vagina of the female to protect the sperm and it facilitate the sexual act by lubricating the reproductive tract of the female and the ph of semen is 7.35 to 7.5 so the penis conduct urine as well as semen both but the two cannot secrete at the same time now the hormonal control of the male reproductive system and here you can see in the picture this is the hormonal control here at the onset of puberty the hypothalamus causes the release of fsh and lh into the testes for the first time here the fsh in the testes stimulates sertoli cells to begins facilitating spermatogenesis and the lh enters into the interstitial cells or leydig cells to make and release testosterone into the testes and the blood this hormone is responsible for the secondary sexual characters that develop in the male during adolescence and stimulate spermatogenesis so these all are the positive feedback of the hormonal control now here a negative feedback also which occurs in the male with rising in the level of testosterone action on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary to inhibit the release of gnrh fsh and lh so these sertoli cells produce inhibin hormone which is released into the blood when the sperm count is too high and it inhibits the release of gnrh and fsh which will causes spermatogenesis to slow down if the sperm count reaches 20 million per ml the sertoli cell sees the release of inhibin and the sperm count increases so this is the hormonal control of the male reproductive system now the onset of puberty in male so puberty is the period when the reproductive organs become functional and it is attained between the age of 13 to 16 years it is triggered by the secretion of testosterone hormone in the testes it brings about growth and the maturation of the secondary sex organs and the development of the accessory sex characters now the male sex act and it involves three phases in which the first one is erection erection of the penis is caused by rush of the arterial blood into the empty sinuses of its spongy tissue on sexual excitement and the erection makes the penis long and stiff for the entry into the female vagina for the copulation 
Second is copulation. Mucus from the urethral glands, corpus glands and the vaginal glands provides lubrication for the copulation. And the ejaculation marks the climax of copulation. And the last is subsidence of erection. After ejaculation, the arterioles to the penis contract reducing the blood flow to the penis and erection subsides. It takes few minutes. So, the sex act also involves increased muscle tension which is known as myotonia. Now, the movement of spermatozoa at the site of fertilization. In the female genital tracts, alkalinity of the semen helps neutralize acidity in the vagina. This protects the sperms and increases their motility. Prostaglandins of the semen thin the mucus at the opening of the uterus and also stimulates contraction of the uterine muscles. These contractions help the semen move up the uterus. When ejaculated, the semen first coagulates making it easier for the uterine contraction to push it up and is then liquefied by the anticoagulating enzymes enabling the sperm to start swimming in the uterus. Then they reach in the oviduct and here the sperm are capacitated. It means attain the ability to penetrate the ovum. So in the ampulla of the oviduct an ovum is present may be fertilized by a sperm and the procreation of the species start. Now the disorders of the male reproductive system. In this the first one is prostatomegaly that means prostatic hypertrophy. It means this is the enlargement of the prostate gland. Next is impotence. This is the inability of the male to achieve and attain the erection of the penis long enough to engage in complete copulation. And the last is sterility. It is the inability of the male sperms to fertilize the ovum. So these are the disorders in case of the male reproductive system. Now the female reproductive system. And here you can see it also consists of this is the female reproductive system and its part a pair of ovaries, a pair of fallopian tube, a uterus, a vagina, external genitalia and breast. So these are the female reproductive system. Now here we will discuss every part in detail. So first one is ovary. So this is the complete structure of the ovary. And ovary is the primary sex organ and almond in shape. It is 2 to 4 cm long, 2 cm wide and 1 cm thick. In the lower part of the abdomen, it is held by the broad ligament. Each ovary is connected by the ovarian ligament to the uterus and a round ligament to the lateral pelvic wall. So, Ovary acts as two functions like the exocrine and endocrine both. It secretes estrogen and progesterone and after menopause ovaries become small and lose follicles. In this picture you can see the structure of the ovaries which has a cavity which is known as stroma and it is surrounded by the germinal epithelium from the outside and the visceral peritoneum from the inside. Stroma has two parts, outer cortex and the inner medulla. In medulla, there are many rounded structures are present which are known as graphene follicle. And it shows the various stages of development and each follicle has the outer side follicle cells and a large ovum inside. When the cells become mature, it secretes estrogen into the blood. And once in a month, the most mature ovum from the ovary is released into the cortex. Then after the rupturing of the follicle, the ovum released. So the graphene follicle is converted into the corpus luteum. So in this picture, you can see the early corpus luteum. And 
in here you can see a cavity which is known as antrum this corpus luteum contains a yellow pigment called lutein and secrete hormones that is the progesterone during the pregnancy and hormone relaxin at the end of the pregnancy so here the point to be noted that the mature follicle cells release estrogen and at the time all the time but the corpus luteum released progesterone and relaxin at the time of pregnancy after the disintegration of the corpus luteum it is converted into the corpus albicans so here in this picture you can see the primordial follicles in converted into the primary follicle then it converted into secondary follicle then it forms mature graafian follicle where after ovulation the oocytes released and ruptured follicle is converted into corpus luteum and after degenerating of the corpus luteum the corpus albicans forms so this is the complete process which occur in the ovaries now the fallopian tube that is the oviduct it conveys the egg from the ovary to the uterus and provides the appropriate environment for its fertilization it has four regions in this picture you can see the first one that is the infundibulum it has finger like projections called the fimbri and it closes to the ovary to receive the egg released from the ovary second is ampulla and it is the next to infundibulum and the major part of the fallopian tube next is isthmus it follows the ampulla and after this the uterine part uterine part is a communication with the uterine cavity next is the uterus it is located between the urinary bladder and the rectum and it shows four regions in which the first one is the fundus which receives the fallopian tube second is cornua what is cornua here the oviduct enters the uterus next is body or corpus it is the main large part and the last is cervix it projects into the vagina so uterus has three walls or coverings the outer which is known as peritoneum middle which is known as myometrium and the last which is known as endometrium so myometrium involved in the uterine movements and the endometrium undergoes cyclic changes during different phases of the menstrual cycle now the normal position of the uterus is antiflexed the line demarcating the body and the cervix is called isthmus the capacity of the uterus can expand 500 times during pregnancy uterus receives the ovum from the fallopian tube forms placenta for the development of fetus and expels the young one at birth now the fourth that is the vagina it extends forward and downward and open out at its lower end into the vestibule by the vaginal orifice the space between the vaginal wall and cervix called fornix it is adapted for receiving the male penis during copulation allowing menstrual flow and the serving as the birth canal during the parturition so in this picture you can see the structure that is the vagina now the external genitalia that is the vulva and here is a depression which you can see the red lines indicate that is known as the vestibules in front of the anus and here two folds are present uh, as like a soft skin which is known as labia minora and labia majora now it is homologous to penis and here also a glands of clitoris present which is covered by prepuce of clitoris and here the urethra and vagina opens by the separate aperture so for the urethra open by the urethral opening that is known as meatus and the vagina open by the vaginal opening vaginal opening is covered by hymen or hymenal carunculus 
A pair of vestibular glands or the Bartholin glands occur on each side of the vaginal opening, which secretes the clear viscous fluid under sexual excitement and serves as lubricant during copulation. So this is the complete structure of the external genitalia in case of the female. Now the last structure that is the breast. In the picture you can see the female breast anatomy. These are the rounded structures located at the pectoral muscles on the front wall of the thorax. So in the picture you can see the pectoral muscles. Each breast has near its middle a nipple which is surrounded by a circular pigmented area known as areola. The breast contains fatty and connective tissues and the mammary glands that is also known as milk gland. Now here you can see the mammary glands open into the nipples by the lactiferous ducts and these ducts open into the lactiferous sinuses to store milk during the lactation. A nursing mother produces 1 to 2 liter of milk per day. Now the onset of puberty in case of female. So the woman attains puberty at the age of 13. Its onset is triggered by the FSH which promotes growth of the ovarian follicle. These follicles secrete estrogen from the follicle cells in the ovaries which brings about the growth and maturation of the reproductive tract and the development of accessory sex characters. Now the hormonal control during puberty. So in this picture you can see the control of reproduction in female is more complex than male. Here the anterior pituitary hormone causes the release of the hormones FSH and LH. So here the, from the ovaries it released estrogen and progesterone in uterus for the functioning and when it released in excess amount then it gives negative feedback to the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus to stop the secretion. Now menopause. Man continues to produce his pumps throughout life from the puberty onwards. Woman stops producing mature eggs and ceases her menstrual cycle in her late 40s or early 50s. So decline in the estrogen level is responsible for the menopause. Now the disorders of the female reproductive system. First one is sterility. It is the inability of the female to conceive. Second is menstrual irregularity. So here there are many cases in the menstrual irregularity like it case of the amenorrhea where the absence of menstruation occur. Next is the hyperaminorrhea where it means the prolonged bleeding from the uterus or de-aminorrhea it means painful menstruation. So these are the menstrual irregularity and this is very common. Next is breast cancer. It occurs in women after 30 years of age. Next is ovarian cyst and these are the fluid filled tumors of the ovaries and the last is cervical cancer and it is a slow growing cancer in case of the female. So this is the end of the reproductive parts it in case of the male and female both. The next video will be on the gametogenesis that means formation of male and female gametes. If you understand this video, please like and share it and subscribe to my channel Anupma Biology Classes. If you have any questions, any queries or any suggestions, you can ask in the comment section below. Thank you for the watching.